Welcome to my channel, Devin Rex for Art here. And I'm going to be doing another um, background. Last uh, video I did this background um, with pan pastels. And I explained that the image was from a book called um, Coloriage Wild. So this was from the original paper that the um, coloring book has. It's quite thick cardstock. Uh, last video I mentioned that I followed Dee Dee Willingham um, in the coloring of the girl. And I also use a lot of DD techniques when I did this version. So what I did is I took the original paper and I had um, copied it onto different types of paper. So this paper here is Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock, um, perfect surface for stamping, uh, digital printing of images, uh, and alcohol-based markers. So basically it's a marker uh, paper. So I colored the image with alcohol markers and some colored pencils. See, I'm just showing which colors of Copic markers I use. And for the skin tones, I use this Crayola uh, Colors of the World, which are pretty inexpensive and they work pretty well. And um, the importance of testing what you want to use on the paper that you have. So here, um, this paper with this mermaid is a shimmer cardstock from Stampin' Up! and it actually takes water soluble mediums quite well. And a reminder, if you use alcohol markers on paper, it will bleed through to the other side. So keep that in mind. And because this marker paper was super absorbent, it uh, didn't take water soluble mediums very well. So I'm going to do a test using different um, things you can coat the paper with. Uh, in addition, you could technically cover the whole page, but as you can see here with the gesso, the colored pencils wouldn't go very well over top. I'm not planning to use uh, colored pencils on my background, so it probably wouldn't really matter. But the Daniel Smith watercolor ground was nice and smooth, penciled worked well. The white was a bit yellow for my taste, so I did like the transparent one better. Some example of water soluble products are watercolor pans, obviously, but there's also some cool pigment powders available, like these Magicals by Lindy Stamp Gang, which are relatively permanent once dry. These are the different colors that I have. Uh, you can see they have lots of fun names. Some are shimmery, some are more flat and you can get lots of cool effects from them. Other examples of pigments are uh, brushos and infusions. Um, neither of these are permanent, but they um, definitely have their uses. Here I'm showing a color book where I was able to use the magicals directly onto the paper and with a pretty good result, I thought. There's a few areas where I added maybe a little bit too much water, but luckily didn't soak through to the other side. And um, I'm planning to use the time travel teal and the Tweedledee denim today. My sets of magicals came in little glass pots, um, but I transferred them to these little plastic containers to make little shakers out of them. And that was inspired by Janet M. Young. She does quite a few videos with magicals, so I'll link her uh, channel below. This is a page I did using the infusions, and you can see there's a few spots where I went over the lines. So that's why I wanna try something different today to make maybe coloring around these areas a little bit easier. And Dee Dee always mentions always uh, test your product in the pages that you're going to be using. So uh, you can see on this last page of this book, uh, that's where I did, did some of my testing. Let's see how the magicals work on these different areas. Uh, the first area where there's no coatings, uh, just the plain paper, you can see it really soaks in. You see the brush marks. It doesn't spread very well. Uh, the next is the clear gesso and it does work really well. You see the individual pigment powder, how they have different colors in it and it blends together really well. Uh, the watercolor ground, same thing, it blends really well. Maybe a little lighter than on the gesso, but I do like the effects. I still don't like the yellowness of the titanium white one, so I'm definitely going to use that transparent. Here I've got my background. I've added some stamped flowers from a Stampin' Up! set and I'm going to color it with some alcohol markers. These are just the cheap ones from Michaels and they work fine. I'm not an expert at alcohol marker coloring. There's lots of YouTube channels out there. Um, Dee Dee does a lot of her color books using alcohol markers and a lot of other mediums and you can go over top of the alcohol markers with colored pencils, which I did on the girl, on the flowers of the girl. I'm not gonna do it on these um, flowers 
but um, you get the idea you can you know there's tons of videos like I said about alcohol markers I do put a bit of white Posca paint in the middle just to give it a good highlight and here you can see I've got all the flowers ready to go so my thinking was to use um, some embossing powder to make a barrier uh, so that when I'm spreading the water soluble media I'm not going to go over my colored image uh, it'll make it easier kind of faster to go through here's the embossing pen I have it has a uh, brush tip and a bullet tip and today we're going to use the bullet tip what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline each flower and then emboss it with clear uh, embossing powder uh, I've done some tests so um, what I found was if I embossed the flower itself with the alcohol markers, it changed the color. So I'm not gonna emboss the whole flower. I'm gonna do an outline around the flower. I'm gonna do that um, before I add the watercolor ground because if you do it um, after, like if you put the watercolor ground on next and then you try to emboss it, I did find that the uh, powder stuck to the watercolor ground, even if it was dry. So I'm gonna do the embossing first. I'm even going to draw around the girl just to make um, when I'm spreading the the uh, magicals just to make it easier. Um, it's going to result in a little halo around her, but you know I'm okay with that. I ended up with the halo in the front um, when I did the masking technique. Um, so this time I'm just going to do it'll be a halo all the way around. So I want this to look neat and tidy. So here is where I'm going to spend my time. Again, I'm going to try to avoid touching the alcohol marker. Just going to go nice and slow. Here I went outside of the line, so I ended up touching that alcohol marker there a little bit. I'm not going to get too uh, particular about it. Um, as long as most of it looks neat and tidy, I think I'm okay with that. Because to me, the fun of mixed media or um, mixed media color books even is that it's the process that's fun and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one as well and most of you know how embossing powder works but I'm just gonna do a quick little demo for those that maybe aren't familiar with it so I've got some clear embossing powder there's lots of different companies that sell this and you just sprinkle it on where you put the uh, fluid, or the embossing ink, and then you can put the leftover back in the container. And I'm gonna just shake off the excess. Um, there is something called an embossing buddy, which um, maybe I'll show you next. I'm not happy with that, so I'm gonna take a little brush a dry brush and I'm going to try to remove that from where it's stuck. Now the alcohol ink shouldn't still be wet so I don't know why that's stuck. Sometimes it's just static electricity. There, so most of it's out now. You can see just the dry powder there, I think. So um, before I use my heat gun, I'm going to just make a little funnel, put that back in there, and then I like to cover this and put it away. So I end up heating up my pot of embossing powder. see it's pretty much disappeared from a distance you can't really see it if you bring it up close you can see the shininess it's basically like little pieces of plastic that you melted all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the flowers just want to show the embossing buddy what it does it's basically a little bag I think it's filled with something similar to cornstarch I've heard of people uh, making their own you just apply it to the paper before using the embossing ink and then that way the embossing powder doesn't stick to the paper I said I'm gonna try not to go over 
her skin a bit. I think I did there a bit. That's okay. And that's one reason um, that I decided to use the clear embossing powder instead of, let's say, white. It's going to look like it's white because the background's white. But if there's any areas where I was a bit sloppy and I went over the image, it's not going to show up as much because it will be clear. It might change the color a little bit, but I don't think it'll be that appreciable. So here you can see the powder. There's a difference between the unmelted and the melted. So here's the melted here. Here's the unmelted. And let's keep going. So there. So I'm going to just continue and do around her distance sections like that. So the next step is I'm going to uh, brush on the transparent watercolor ground. And um, you can see it's pretty thin consistency. Now, because it's transparent, it is a little bit tricky to see. where I've gotten. So in that sense, I suppose it's a little bit finicky. And uh, I feel like I can go up to where the um, embossing is. If I miss a little bit here or there, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference because I'm not planning on doing like a flat wash. I'm going to have um, like a model -y, dreamy kind of background. Almost there. And I still feel like even though this is a bit finicky, I still feel that it's lower stress than uh, trying to move a water, oop, right there, squished it. Uh, move a water soluble medium quickly over the page while like, to get a good blend and then not making sure you don't hit the coloring book elements or your you know your drawing let's say you weren't doing color book you're doing your own drawing um just navigating quickly around these flowers uh, under that pressure of oh i don't want to go over top of the flower you know it's just i'm hoping when i go to do the magicals we'll see the benefit of this little these two little extra steps of the embossing outline and the uh, watercolor ground and if you don't have the clear watercolor ground um, you could certainly use the clear gesso um, it did look very nice I didn't it just felt really rough to me I just didn't want to put something that rough on my page That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let that dry. It says allow 24 to 48 hours to cure before applying watercolor or acrylics. I'm not going to wait that long because I'm not that patient. I'm gonna heat set it and then I'm gonna come back in an hour and uh, continue on. So I'm gonna wet an area, add the sprinkles of these two. start with that. See right here you can see I didn't get the watercolor ground. You can see it bubbling up. So that will be interesting. Hopefully I don't have too many of those areas. I think if I have a few it won't be such a big deal. And then I'm just gonna... So this is where I think the the fact that the um, embossing section is like a resist. It just helps me have not such a hard time getting close to the flowers. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna wet it a little bit more. I'm gonna add some of that Tweedledee denim. Ooh, that was a lot.
because I have that watercolor ground on most of it, I have a bit of time to play. You actually see where I don't have good coverage of the watercolor ground, like right here and there. So hopefully those areas are confined to the, uh, the edges. You can see how that resists the water the embossing area resists the water and gives me a nice um, even halo without a lot of effort. So I still have to be a little bit careful going around the uh, flowers. Bit of the powder on the um, color book part, I would just wait till everything dries and then you could just blow it off. As long as you don't have it wet, it won't um, leave a color behind. see how sometimes the um, magicals, um, the different powder colors will reveal themselves. Like down here, it looks more green. So I'm just being careful. I'm just trying to push the magicals up against the embossed area and then let the embossing do the magic. I'm just going to soften some of these little sections. Add a bit of the Tweedle D down here. You see here where I thought, okay, I'm just going to blend that. It doesn't really blend because now that once it dries, it's kind of set. So you definitely don't have to be a watercolor expert. Is it perfect? No, but that's okay. So I'm gonna let that dry. Um, while that's drying, I'm going to put my little caps back on and put the stickles. While this was drying, I just had another thought. I think to the flower centers, I'm going to add stickles because the embossing um, powder gives it a bit of a shine. It might be nice to bring a bit of that shine into each flower. So I'm going to do that at the very, very, very end because stickles takes a while to dry. Spot right here. I want to add a bit more too. So it's okay to go back and, and up the contrast a bit. Um, Dee Dee says, you know, what really makes a coloring book page or, you know, most images really is that contrast. Interesting, even though I use the same color here and here, a lot more of the green 
um, came out on that side and that's the thing with magicals is you can't really you can't really control the you know if you're using it in this way you can't really control the color there's a way you can use magicals where you um, put the powder in you add water and you stir it till it's one color but I like to me I like the surprise I like that's what's magical to me is that it you don't control it um, here I'm going to add a little bit more because when I, I kind of scraped my brush I had a brush mark so I'm going to add a little bit more I do like how the denim has a little bit of a pink in it there's nothing wrong with um, just kind of letting something sit uh, come back to it later and make adjustments I'm going to let that dry and then we'll do our little photo montage, video montage. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for um, your likes, your comments, your subscriptions. Thank you.